Good morning. This is Barbie at Authorize Back and So. I'm here for our Thumbs Up Thursday. And today we have something special for you. I'm really excited. Um, if you don't, if you have not been here on this Thumbs Up yet, the uh, key is that you will be texting a special word and I will re reveal what that word is at the end of the show. Also, today is something a little special. We are actually going to be doing a project. I made a mesh tote bag, so I'm going to be showing you how to make this. And also, it comes with a free pattern when you purchase the kit. So this is the tote bag, the 4th of July tote bag that I'm going to be showing you how to make today. It um, We got these dog print fabrics in and I just fell in love with them and it just told me that I needed to make a tote bag. So I'm going to share with you today on how I made this. I'm really excited. Okay, so for this kit, you will need your vinyl pet screen and I'm using white today. Um, also, I am using the Mettler white sewing thread and it is always very important to starch your fabrics. And the reason is it locks the fibers together and it just makes it so much easier when you're sewing that it's more um, structured. Also, another thing, if you have a hard time sewing and keeping your folds in your fabric perfect, I use Wonder Tape that helps hold it down. You can use the Wonder Tape to lay your fabric down, to attach it to something before you stitch it. It's like an extra pair of hands. So I have lots of tricks that I use that I'll share with you today. Um, so first step, you're going to get your vinyl and you are going to trim it when you open it up. You're gonna trim it so it is 17 inches wide by 28 inches long, okay? I've already pre-cut this one just to make it a little easier, but I am gonna show you that when you trim it, make sure you cut off the part that has a closer weave on it. You don't want that at the top of your bag because when you put the binding on, it's going to show and you don't want that to show. So I've already trimmed it up and now what I'm going to do, I am going to take my vinyl and I'm gonna fold it in half evenly. And then what I like to do is just use some quilt clips to hold it so you're not fighting with it. And I'm just gonna press it even. And just get it nice and flat. And then when I let go, it's just gonna get all fluffy again. So I'm just gonna take my quilt clips that's my other extra pair of hands. And I'm just gonna clip it to hold it for me. There we go. Turquoise and pink are my favorite colors, by the way. <laughs> All right, so now what I wanna do is I'm gonna mark my corners with a marker so I can box my corners when I get to that point. So I'm going to take my ruler and if you want to know what kind of ruler I'm using, it's the um, quilt selectors. It has a film on it so it doesn't slip. This is one of my favorite go-to rulers. So I am going to mark a two by two square on here. So that will show me where I need to block my corners. So I'm just marking just to get an idea where it's at. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other corner. And it's a light colored pin and you're probably not able to see it at home, but you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm just marking each side. Now what I want to do is I'm going to draw a line three inches up from the bottom. And what that's going to do, that is going to help me lay down my piece of fabric. So let's go here. I want to go three inches from the bottom fold. So I'm just going to draw my line right across here. And I'm going to do it on the other side also. 
That way I lay my fabric evenly on both sides. Okay, so I've got that one. And now I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna do the same thing to the back side. This is a fun little project to do. I could just sit and make these all day long. If you've never done a French seam, you're gonna learn how to do that today. And what a French seam does, it closes off the raw edge of the seam. So like if you're making um, garments and you're using uh, sheer fabric, you will wanna do a French seam because you can see through the fabric and but the seam will look nice and neat. So there's that, that is all marked. Now what I wanna do is you're gonna take and you're gonna choose which dog picture that you wanna put on your tote bag. And this is a panel that will come in the kit. So I've already cut one off. So this is what that looks like. You have a selection of little dogs. And what I did is I trimmed it right at the red line. There's a red line right up here at the top. You're gonna cut a quarter of an inch above that red line, okay? And the stars is what I used for the binding around the top. So once you've cut your square out and you've trimmed it from the red line a quarter of an inch out all the way around, you're going to also get a piece of white fabric, a fat quarter, and that will become your pocket lining. So there's my dog that I chose today, and I have my white piece of lining. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put them right sides together. If you put wrong sides together, then your pocket's gonna have the raw edge all the way around it. And we call that the shabby chic look. And you don't want that today. So what we're doing, we're just lining them up. If you need to pin it, definitely pin it. I pin sometimes, sometimes I don't, just depends on my mood. But today I'm not gonna pin it and I am just going to come over here and I'm gonna do a quarter inch seam allowance. Now I'm using the Stellaire today and I can go in and it has an automatic quarter inch stitch with the J foot and it's one dash 30 and it has a P on it for piecing. So I'm just gonna go over here and just start sewing. And what I'm gonna do, I'm starting at the bottom. And remember, when you do this, you want to leave an opening for turning. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to turn your pocket and you're going to be using your famous seam ripper, which we don't like to do that either. But I'm just gonna start sewing. And here we go. Okay, sometimes I wake up in the morning and everything's backwards <laughs> and I turn my presser foot the wrong way. Okay, here we go. So I'm just gonna start sewing. And I have it set for that quarter inch stitch. So all I have to do is leave my fabric to the outer edge of the J foot and come to the corner. One more, pick up the foot and turn it. And remember, ladies, when you're sewing, your needle knows what it's supposed to do. So all you're gonna do is keep an eye on the outer edge of your fabric. You don't have to watch that needle. That needle's doing what it's supposed to do. So you just focus on your sewing. Oh, I turned up the speed. I drive like I sew, by the way. <laughs> okay. I remember the very first tote bag that I made. I was so excited to show Veronica, the owner of Authorized Back and Sew, the bag that I made. And when I got done sewing those straps on, I held up my bag. Hmm. It looked like suspenders. I put the straps on in the wrong place. <laughs> so I had to rip them out. 
you know, that seam ripper is our favorite tool when we're sewing. What size white fabric? Um, I, oh, I'm sorry. I cut it to the same size as the pocket, mm -hmm. which will be your dog. Mm -hmm. So once you've made this one, you can use any panel that has these squares on them that you can cut out and use them as a pocket. So the ideas are endless, actually. These would make cute placemats. Um, you could make trivets. A table runner. Okay. You don't have to leave a big, big opening because this is cotton fabric, so it's not real heavy. And then I'm just going to come over here. I have sewed my pocket. And now I'm going to, it's like turning socks. You want to go to that far corner, and that's what you're going to bring up first. If you do that, you shouldn't ever have problems turning something right side out. It's funny because I do not like to turn socks right side out, but it doesn't bother me to turn fabric right side out. I hate folding laundry, but I don't mind folding fabric. I just, I don't know what, what it is. <laughs> now, when you um, leave the opening for turning and you get it turned, you're going to press it really well. And you can sew it shut when you go to apply the pocket onto the fabric. Or if you don't want to do that and you're afraid you're not going to get it straight, the thing that I like to do, I forgot to get a turning tool. The thing that I like to do, and everybody that knows me knows I'm all about fabric glue. And the fabric glue that I like to use, it's the fabric tack. It dries clear. You, it has a small tip, so you can get it on there really fine. And then I will take the iron and I set it, and it's instantly ready. So it's really, really nice. But I am all about the glue. So I'm just poking out my corners. You have to be careful when you poke the corners, even using a turning tool. Sometimes um, people put a lot of strength behind it and they'll just poke it right through the fabric. And then you have to do uh, another seam. So I was very careful. Now I'm just gonna lay it here on my pad, ironing pad. And if you um, like my ironing pad that I'm using, it's something we carry in the store and it has the cutting mat on the back side. So it's easy to take to class. It doesn't take up a lot of space. It's not extra heavy. And then I'm just using my iron right here. It doesn't want to come over very far for me today. So I'm just going to press it. This is my favorite little iron. It's small, fits in the palm of my hand. This is also another one that we sell in the store. And it is the Mighty Steam Iron. And that one retails for $39.99, but I love this iron just because it's small and fits in my, my hand. It doesn't take up a lot of space when I'm sitting there working on my projects. So I'm just pressing this down. And then once I get it pressed, then I'm gonna use my starch to set it. With glue, um, as soon as I put the glue on, I press it with the heat of the iron because the heat of the iron dries it just like that. And it holds up very well. I have not had anything come undone on me when I've used it. Kathy says you love your shirt. Oh, thank you. Day. <laughs> yes, I dress for the occasion today since it's a um, patriotic mesh bag, I thought, well, I'll wear my stars and stripes today. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Does anybody else have any questions out there? Feel free to ask. If I don't know the answer, I'll pretend like I do. Because <laughs> that's what I do best. <laughs> I learned over the years, if you just talk like you know what you're talking about, people will believe you. So I can tell the wildest stories and people believe me. Yes, that is, it's fabric tack and has a little orange handle, but it's really handy and it has a real fine tip. Yeah, okay, perfect. Everything is on our website. If you're interested in it, we can help you out. Whatever you want, we can help you out. Oh, yes, it is, because it fits right in the hoop. That was probably the first thing that sold me on this iron, was the fact that you could press in the hoop. So like if you're using um, the stabilizers, heat and stay or stitch and wash, you just center your fabric in that hoop and use this iron and press it right down. Because the big ones, they do tend to get in the way. So let's see. Go back up here and get this one little corner. If they make this project and they want to show us, they can um, post the picture and use uh, some the project. Oh, cool. So, uh, so if you want to make the project, and you want to show us that you completed the project, you can send us a picture and do hashtag thumbs up project. I would love to see what you girls have created. Because this will just start a whole new world for you on using panels. I love panels. I always tell my girls, just challenge your imagination and see what you come up with. Uh, let's give it a little more spritz. I'm using the Best Press Starch, and we carry that in the store also. So, honestly, I have my own little mini AVS store at home. <laughs> so I have everything I need when I'm ready to start a project. So now you can see I've ironed my pocket, and because I've used the Best Press, look at how nice it is. It's nice and pressed, smooth. Okay, so the next thing you're going to do is you will also have your front panel pieces. You're going to cut those to 10 and 3 quarters by 17 inches wide. 10 and 3 quarters, and you will turn under a quarter of an inch, press it under, and then what I did is I took the... Um, wash away wonder tape by Dritz, and we carry this in the store too, my second pair of hands. And then what I do is after I've pressed it, I just run a strip down right along and then fold the fabric over and it holds it down. So I know when I'm ironing it, it's gonna stay creased. And all it does is you just peel off the paper and then you can stick the other side. So it's double stick. It's really nice. And I'm just gonna give it another little press because I did this yesterday to get it ready. No, I'm doing thumbs up. <laughs> that was Ralph, people. <laughs> the show is live. <laughs> and I'm trying not to be Lucille Ball and make a mess of everything today. So, so that was one side, the front side. Now I'm gonna do the back side and same thing. I turned it under a quarter of an inch. And if you ladies have a hard time getting that quarter inch press, they make a ruler. And some of you may know this and some of you may not. So it is, it is a hot ruler. And they call it a hot ruler because it's made out of fibers that are not gonna melt under your iron. And it has all the markings on it so you can get your perfect seam when you need to press. If you haven't tried one, you need this in your life. It really does make a difference because my quarter of an inch looks really nice. All right, so now that I've got these ready and they're pressed, I am gonna take the front of my bag 
that I marked, the three inch mark. I know you probably can't see it, but it's there. I see it. And I am just going to lay it down. I'm gonna line up the bottom with my three inch mark. And by doing that, I know that it's gonna be in the right place on both sides, okay? So I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to use my pins. Helps if I turn it right side up. There was a Lucy moment. <laughs> and now these little pins have a rubber tip to them. They're really nice for grabbing. I, we also carry those at the store. Like I said, I have my own mini AVS store at home. So I'm just gonna run some pins to help do this. I could also use the tape, the double stick tape that I showed you, but I'm not going to, I'm just gonna do this. Oops, didn't get quite over. Okay. Just gonna pin it and then I'm gonna stitch it down. It's that easy. And if you're wondering why I haven't done the side seams yet, because sewing the panel, if I was to do the side seams, I'd be sewing in a tunnel and I don't wanna do that. So this is easier. And when you do those French seams, you will fall in love with French seams if you haven't made them yet. They're great for mesh because then you don't have the sharp edges poking out and you don't have to go in and um, put binding on the seams because they're enclosed. It's a little extra work, but it's so worth it. So there I have on one side, I have my panel piece. Okay, and so now I'm just gonna come over here. I'm gonna sew close to the edge. So it's not a quarter inch stitch. It will just be maybe an eighth of an inch from the edge. I still have it on my quarter inch stitch, but what I'm doing is I'm laying my fabric right to the inside of the J foot and using that as my guideline. And I'll try not to drive too fast. Okay. <laughs> if you've never sewn on vinyl mesh, it is so easy to use. I like to make um, trick-or-treat bags for my grandkids using the mesh and Halloween fabric. And if you wanna put their name on it, just embroider, if you have an embroidery machine, just embroider on some fabric and then sew it onto the mesh. The mesh is kind of an open weave, so I don't recommend trying to embroider directly onto it. Even if you have fabric over it and you try to embroider that way, it comes out a little bumpy. So it's better if you just do a, a separate piece of fab fabric and then sew it on. You could use um, heat and bond to put it on the fabric or even my wonderful fabric glue. Yeah. Stitching that down. So I've got that done. So now there's my front panel piece on that one. Now I'm gonna do it on the other side. And I'm taking the pins out so I don't get stuck. Any questions out there? Oh, good, good. Yes, that I will tell you towards the end of the show. Yes, oh, make sure you share this too so you can win another prize. What do we give away for the shares? Oh, wow. Can I go offline so I can share? <laughs> I know that's true, yes. <laughs> but you know, we keep getting in this beautiful fabric and it just kills me. So I weaken and I buy it because I just have to have it. We have some beautiful patriotic fabrics in the store, by the way. 
And we're really helpful. If you can't make it in the store and you want to see what we have, we have been known to take pictures and text them to you. So we can also do that for you if you can't make it into the store. Yeah. Aw, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> How this came about is I made this bag and I brought it in just to show off the fabrics. And then everyone wanted to learn how to make this. So this is why I'm doing this today, is so you can see how I did it. This makes a great bag for shopping too. If you wanted to use the whole width of the vinyl mesh, you could do that. The vinyl mesh is 36 inches by 18, so your bag would be 18 inches wide, just an inch bigger than this. Okay, so I've got this side pinned and now I'm going to sew that. And remember, this piece was cut 10 and 3 quarters by 17, which is the width of the bag. The 10 and 3 quarters, once you turn it down a quarter of an inch on both ends, will match up for your pocket. I've made project bags with this vinyl mesh too. It works wonderful. Quick and easy project. Did that so fast, I didn't even realize I did both sides already. Sometimes I amaze myself. <laughs> no. Mm -mm. My favorite needle is a Janome blue tip needle. We carry those in the store too, of course, but they are my favorite. I use them for sewing, I use them for embroidery. They're just my go to needle. All right, so I have both sides done, so this is what my bag looks like. Now what I want to do is sew my pocket on. So what you're going to do, you're going to look at both sides of the pocket because maybe you have a favorite dog on here and you don't want to cover that dog up. So I'm just going to choose, and I think I like this side. So I am going to take my pocket. I am going to center it on my bag. Some people will probably use a ruler. I'm just one of those that I'm just going to eye it and get it where I want it. Now I am going to pin it down again. By the way, the pattern is free. Yes, the pattern, the pattern is free. You, oh, you don't have to purchase either? Oh, uh-huh, free pattern. Oh, cool. Nice. All right. Well, that's good. All you have to do is just go and click on the free pattern. But of course, you want the kit because these dogs are just so stinking cute. And you created this pattern. Yes, I created this pattern. This is my pattern. It is a pattern that I created to use with the 10 inch blocks on a, pa on a panel. So. And if you have a panel that you've been hanging on to because you didn't know what to do with it, and maybe the blocks are smaller, just make a smaller bag. It's yours. You do whatever you want to do. At the end, I'm going to show you how I embellished mine. Because, you know, if you're doing a patriotic bag, you just got to embellish it. It has to have some sparkle. Put one at the bottom. This is where I didn't, 
I didn't glue this one closed. I'm just going to sew it closed. I have confidence in myself today. All right. So now my pocket is pinned on and I am going to now sew it on. I'm not going to sew across the top or it will no longer be a pocket. Over here, I'm just going to stitch close to the edge again. So I'm going to just follow that red line. And you want to reinforce the top of the pocket. So if you're putting something in there that is bulky, it's not going to tear it. But that's another reason why I'm using polyester thread is because polyester is strong. You don't, you don't really want to use 100% cotton thread on this project. It's not a quilt, so you need that strength. And you don't have to worry about shrinkage. There we go. Now I'm just going to flip it around without knocking everything off here. Okay. Catching that opening. that pin out to get it out of my way. Oops. One more, one more click. There we go. The Brother Stellaire is a really great machine for sewing with too. It has um, a dual feed foot too for sewing um, items that you don't want to slip around. Like if you're doing plaid and you want to match up the plaid, the dual feed foot works wonderful for that. I did. I just had a birthday and I am proud to say I am now 65. <laughs> I have my Medicare card. I was really excited about that. You know, that's, I was thinking the other day, we can't wait to turn 18 and 16 and then life is kind of dull and then you get to be 65 and life just begins. <laughs> People probably think I'm insane for saying that, but you know, age is just a number. It doesn't bother me. Okay, so now my pocket is on and I didn't sew the top shut, so it's usable. All right, so now the next thing I wanna do is I am going to take my binding and I cut this two and a quarter inches wide. And this, this binding comes from right here on the bottom of the panel. I use those stripes. Yeah, if um, you don't want to cut it because you might want to use it for something else, we do also carry the red and white stars in the store too. So what I've done is I've cut this two and a quarter inches wide by the width of the fabric, okay? So if you're using the bottom, it will be 17 inches or the width of the, width of the panel, I'm sorry. I'm thinking 17 for the bag. That's what it will end up being. And I'm just pressing it getting it nice and smooth. Oh, thank you so much, Sandy. Every day is blessed because I get to work here. I love my job here. All right, okay, so now I have my binding and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna line up raw edge to raw edge of the bag. And I'm sewing it to the inside of the bag so I can bring it around to the front, all right? And I'm gonna use a quarter inch stitch. And I'm not pinning it, I'm just going to lay it over here and sew. But like I said, if you would rather pin it, you can pin it. Okay, I'm gonna do my quarter inch stitch. And remember, it's raw edge to raw edge.
Any questions? Not yet? Okay. <laughs> I'm just doing the top. And the reason I don't have to bind the whole bag is because I'm going to do a French seam. So that just makes your life a lot easier. So I've done, okay, I've sewed it to the inside, raw edge to raw edge. And remember, I'm gonna bring this around to the front. So now I'm going to do this side. So again, quarter inch seam allowance. You can always watch this video after. Oh, yeah. Yes. So if you need it. A reminder, the video will be available to watch again. Just because it's live doesn't mean you can't go back and preview it again. So it'll be like I'm right there in your sewing room with you, holding your hand. I don't know about the rest of you, but I could just sew every day, all day long. All right, okay, so now I have my binding on both sides. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take it and I'm going to flip it around to the front and tack it down. And because the plastic vinyl is so sturdy, I can feel right where it's gonna line up at and it just stays there when I'm sewing it. So I'm just gonna sew it close to the edge. So this time what I'm gonna do, whoa, not knock the pins on the floor. I'm going to use on this brother machine, I'm going to use 1-02. That brings my needle to the left. So now when I have my fabric right to the inside edge of the J foot, it'll be right where it needs to be for this seam. Now, if you're afraid you're not gonna stitch perfectly straight, you could change to red thread right now, but I'm just doing the white. If I'm afraid somebody's gonna see my seam, it's a little crooked, <laughs> I'm just gonna swing my bag while I'm walking so nobody can see it. <laughs> But the dogs are so cute. They're not even gonna pay attention to your sewing on here. All right, so I have one side done and it was very fast and easy. And now I'm going to do the other end. And remember the binding is cut at two and a quarter inches for this project. If there's something, another um, little project that maybe you struggle with that you might want to have us do a thumbs up on, just let us know. We're always open to ideas. Huh? Teaching. Yes, teaching. Yes, we'll be teaching. Because that's our favorite thing to do. We want everybody to enjoy sewing. It is very soothing. 
if I'm getting really cranky, I know if I go into my sewing room and I just spend an hour in there doing what I love, everybody lives around me. And sometimes I act like I'm cranky even when I'm not, just so I can go to my sewing room. <laughs> but now that I've said that, and if my husband watches this, he's going to know my trick. So that was a dumb thing to say. <laughs> okay, so I have the binding done on both. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove these clips off the bottom of the bag. Am I still lined up on here? Okay, I'll make sure I didn't do didn't slide it. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm putting wrong sides together. So the right side of the bag is the one that you're going to see. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna line it up on the side here. I'm gonna do a quarter inch seam just running down the side, okay? So now I'm gonna set it back at the 1-30 on the brother machine for my quarter inch and the J foot. Aw, well, that was sweet. Thank you so much. I do um, Luminaire Club in case some of you don't know. So if you purchase a Brother Luminaire through us, we have a club that you will come to a class each month and learn something new using your machine because it has some wonderful features. And we've been having a, a lot of fun playing with it. Oh yes, and I do Kimberbell Club. So if you don't, if you aren't familiar with Kimberbell Club, that is a monthly club where you come for well, probably about an hour and a half. And we have um, it's called dealer exclusive designs. So when you join the club every month, you get that free design and you come to class and I teach you how to make it. So I have done one side, now I'm gonna do the other side, quarter inch. Yeah. And I like to come up with other ideas that you can make with the Kimberbell designs too. So you always get a little extra when you come to class. It's fun. I try to make it fun, let's just put it that way. All right, so now I have my quarter inch seam allowance and now I'm going to turn the bag wrong side out. So the right sides will be facing each other now. This is doing a French seam that I was talking about. I'm just going to... I don't know, maybe an hour? Well, maybe not even an hour. Well, it depends. Depends on how many times you have to remeasure your fabric before you cut it. I'm not a perfectionist, so I just go and cut it. I don't measure twice <laughs> and cut once. <laughs> but this is such an easy project that it's easy. So now what I've done is I'm turning this right side out and I'm pushing that seam right to the out, outer edge. And I'm going to use quilt clips to hold it this time. Reason is because I don't want it to go back in. It tends to want to slide in. So I'm just rolling it out. So I have it, the edge even. And because I've done a quarter inch stitch, I'm gonna go a little wider to make sure I catch that raw edge and that it's hidden inside my seam. I'm telling you, these are such a fun bat, 
fun bags to make. They are a lot of fun. And you can use them for everything. You could even make grocery shopping bags with these. I crack up because this video is live. So everybody that walks by, walks by very slow and very quiet. We're still open even during our live videos. So life goes on. Okay, so now I've got it clipped. I'm ready to sew. And remember, I'm going to go a little bit wider than the quarter inch because I want to make sure that I encase that seam in my stitches. There we go. I don't want any raw edge poking out. So I'm going to just go over here and I'm going to move my needle probably to the center. There we go. And still have my fabric at the outside edge. If I don't catch that seam, then I can always go back. And remember that when you're sewing thicker things, you don't start the top of it, of your fabric, at the opening of the foot. You want it back a little further because you're going to go forward. You're going to put it in reverse. That's when you're going to go up there and catch that, okay? So don't think you have to start right at the top edge. So I'm probably about an eighth of an inch to the outside edge, making sure that I'm getting my seam caught. Who? Oh, good. Yes. They're, you know, they're a nice little gift too, to give to somebody. Got that side done. Now I'm going to do the other side. So I'm back behind the opening of that foot. I'm just going to go in reverse and catch it. And you can see how easy it is to sew this mesh. And I'm going to reinforce the top by just going back and forth a couple of times. All right. It is easy. <laughs> it's fun and easy. Okay, I'm just trimming my threads. Trim my threads on this side. Now I'm not going to turn the bag right side out yet because I want to do my straps. So I'm just going to set this aside. My straps, I cut. Um, I do believe I cut them four and a half. Let's see. I have to find my, oh, four inches wide. My straps are four inches wide by whatever length you want your strap to be. Some people are taller. I happen to be short. So what, I'm gonna, what I do is I just press it in half. It's like this. And then you're just going to take them and, and figure out how wide you want it. You can go right up to the fold line. You can go a quarter of an inch out. With your bag, you make it like you want it. I just give you how I do it, and it's up to you to do it the way you want. I just love these little puppies. They're so cute. I have Yorkies, and it is so hard to find fabric that has Yorkies on it. And this just happens to have Yorkies. So, of course, this is how it all began. All right. Oh, perfect. That makes me happy. 
Okay, so if you spray starch it, like I said, it's going to give it more support and it's just going to sew better. It's not gonna slip around as much. All right, so there's my first strap. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sew close to the edge of this side and close to the edge of that side. And I'm also going to turn it under a quarter of an inch at the bottom so I don't have a raw edge. And again, you're gonna start this back further than the opening of your foot. And the reason is you don't want it to get hung up. Otherwise you'll just be stitching in one place. So I'm gonna go back to my 1-30. If you wanna do a decorative stitch, you can do a decorative stitch. It is entirely up to you. So I'm at the 1-30 and I am using the inside edge of my foot to get close to the edge. Okay. And I'm not watching the needle, I am just watching the inside edge of my foot. Oh, there's a thread. And did you know that the faster you sew, the easier it is to sew a straight line? You just, the control is better. Don't ask me why, but I, I will be honest, I don't know the answer to that, but it just makes it easier. And I forgot to, to fold that under. So what I'm gonna do is just take that out, fold my in. my threads here. Oh yes, definitely. You should be sharing. Share this video with everybody because I want you to win. Comment, share. Yeah, comment, share. Yes. Lorraine's behind the scenes. She's telling me <laughs> these things because she knows I'm not going to remember everything. <laughs> I'm in the sewing mode. <laughs> okay, all right, so I got that side done. Now I'm gonna flip it around and I'm gonna sew the other side, trim my threads. Okay. Okay. Don't forget about your little dogs and cats. You can make them cute little bandanas for the season also. Very easy to do. Matter of fact, on my bandana, I put a snap on the back of it instead of having to tie it. Okay, all right, so I have one strap done and now I'm gonna make the other strap. Mm. I've already pressed it, but I think it needs to be pressed again. Any other questions? No? Okay. Ah. <laughs> I, oh yes, we have some more red, white, and blue. We also have um, quilt kits for this patriotic quilt. We have some really beautiful things here. We have uh, Fourth of July panels, and you, 
like I said, if you want to see it and you can't get in the store or you live elsewhere, just call the store and we will be more than happy to send you pictures of something that you want to see. You know, we aim to please around here. We want everyone to be happy. Okay. All right. So I'm ready. I'm going to sew my next strap. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to turn this one under. I got too excited. Okay. Over here. All right, I got that one turned under. All right, now I'm going to go down the other side. Okay, both my straps are made. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out where I want them to be. And I usually go off the pocket where the pocket is and decide how far over the thread I saw. I'm going to clip. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's me too. I could just sew all day. Never get tired of sewing. Okay, so I'm just going to go halfway in between where my pocket opening is and the edge. And I've got the end turned under. So I'm going to bring it down about a half inch on the back side. I don't know if you can see that, but just a half it. Right there? Oh, I see. Uh, where is my hand? Right there. Everything moves backwards here. So about a half inch down. Okay. And actually, you know what? It's probably easier if you do turn it right side out. So let's do that. <laughs> well, she'll just have to go adopt a dog that's in the fabric. <laughs> yeah, she could. Yes. Come on, Robin, you can embroider one. All right. Okay. So now let's try that again. I'm going to line it up, put it right here. Just sew it. I just eye it. I'm, you know, like I said, I'm not a perfectionist. I just put it where I want it. A Dalmatian and a Yorkie. <laughs> um, looks like a golden retriever. <coughs> Maybe a Shih Tzu. Um, what, what's the hound dogs? Those are in here. <coughs> yes, the Basset Hound. <coughs> Excuse me. There's quite a few dogs. 
just not the pug. <laughs> yes, they are. It ruffled, ruffled collars, bandanas. <laughs> so I'm just going across. And you're going to want to secure this really good because this is the strap of your bag. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> All right. Turn it around and come back across again. Yeah, right there. And I just, I go back and forth over it. I want to make sure that it's caught. <laughs> Lorraine's bringing me my water. She doesn't want me to choke to death. At least not. <laughs> On your watch, thank you. <laughs> well, don't worry, the instructions are right here beside me, so you can take over. <laughs> okay, so I got one side down. Now, this is where I made my very first mistake on my bag. So when my first tote bag, I brought the strap over this way. Now see why it looked like um, overalls? So you don't want to do that. You're going to bring it around over to this side, okay? <laughs> oh, that was so funny that day when I flipped it around and saw what I did. Uh-oh, my little dog is here. Summer's here. <laughs> as soon as she comes to the store, she comes looking for me. <laughs> Hi, Sum Sum. Hello, my baby girl. Just trimming off some more threads. There. Up. Up. Nope, I ignored her, so she's leaving me. I probably hurt her feelings. <laughs> All right. Now. All right, now there, I'm going to turn it. And see how easy it is to sew the straps on? I mean, you're not working in an obstacle course. It's just so easy to do. So I hope you're sharing this video. Because I want you to win a prize. Okay. <laughs> Veronica was being loud a minute ago. Did you hear her? She's here. <laughs> All right. I think she should pop in and say hello to everybody with Summer because she's been running around. Oh, she did. Yes. So right here. Yes. <laughs> I am teaching them how to make this tote bag. We almost have it done. It feels like my sewing room. Yes. I mean, how fun is this? Yes. Oh, this bag. I love this bag. Yes. How cute. Which dog did you this time? Oh, it's like a saint. Oh, is that what it is? I don't know. Okay. Somebody was asking me what all the dog breeds are. <laughs> Oh, of course. Yes. So that's cool. They're learning yeah. how to make a bag. I love yes. That. And you're sewing on the Stell Air? Yes. Yep. Nice. Uh huh. Yeah. Stell Air is on sale on the website. Scan and cut. I don't know. Can they hear that's me? That's a killer. Oh, yeah. Because you're next to oh, me. Oh, I'm next to yes. you. Okay. Yeah. Yes. 
what is it, six, sixty nine ninety nine? Yes. And they get mm -hmm. the scan and cut with it. And yes. Sheen. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and I do scan and cut classes too. So yeah. don't think we're just going to give you the scan and cut and you're going to go home and have to learn it. You can come in here and we will help you discover another fun toy. Like sewing yes. uh, standing? You know, I really do. <laughs> it's nice. My biggest fear last night was, oh my gosh, what if I can't reach the pedal? because I'm standing up, you know, if the pedal had to be shorter. Yeah. So I'll just treat myself like at kids camp where we put a box under their foot control oh, for yeah, them. The yes, the crates work great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our kids camp is gonna be starting up in July. Yeah, yeah. we have three, that's so exciting. Have three spaces left. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're gonna get a sewing machine this year. Oh, that's camp. nice. Mm -hmm. brother, brother, brother. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. That's great. I put my granddaughter in the kids' camp. She absolutely loved it. Bowl class going on in there. Yes, we do. We have a rope bowl class. If you have not checked out our rope bowl classes, please do. Yeah, we have the best. Oh, she best is instructor. She is so country. talented. Yeah. Yeah, she's always coming up with new ideas. So I'm just gonna trim. Yeah, she's always bringing us great. Oh. Like. Uh, fruit and stuff is she never she is i know she is just so wonderful i am excited that you're going to learn how to make this bag everybody just loves this bag hi denise <laughs> last strap here is going on And I'll give you another one of my uh, little secrets too. If you have done some sewing and you do not like, like maybe where you tacked it down and you don't like it and you think maybe you should have used a different color of thread, if it's white thread, you can always use your fabric markers and color it in so you can't see it. That's another one of my secrets. You girls are learning all my secrets today. Uh -huh. This is why you think I'm so good at everything. It's because I've learned how to hide things or use the fabric glue. Fabric glue and sewing just go together if you ask me. I really like doing this today. Have, teaching you girls how to make this bag. Yes, definitely. We will have more classes. Oh, ooh, Tony is going to teach the scan and cut, what he likes to do, and Cindy's going to teach. Well, yes, we will get as many instructors as we can to um, come on here and show you their favorite things to do. All right, so now I've got that done. Now I'm gonna turn the bag wrong side out again because I need to block the ends, the corners. Oh, I guess I could turn this off. I'm done with my iron, my handy dandy iron. Soon. <laughs> yes, exactly. He, he's so funny. We just love Tony here. He started working here, decided that we needed the website, so he created the website. And from there, he ended up getting a scan and cut because he saw some of the things that we were making with it. And then after that, he bought a multi needle. So he, he is learning what fun is all about. Okay, so if you can see here, I have the corner. You know what? I'm going to move this out of the way because I'm not ironing now. So I have the corner right here. And I'm going to measure two inches up. And then I'm going to sew straight across. Okay? It's that easy to block corners. I, n I don't believe in the word I can't. You can you just have to have confidence. Just fake it like I do. And I dropped my pen, so I have to bend down and get it. 
All right. So I'm just gonna mark it two inches up, and do my line across. I'm just using a water soluble marker. I've got that one. Now I'm gonna come around here and do this side. It's easier if you stick your hand inside just to get it even. And now I'm gonna mark that one at two inches. This mesh is really easy to work with. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, most definitely. Because there's always somebody that's gonna know how to do something around here. Um, we're kind of, we're kind of creative and crazy around here. All right, so now I'm just gonna sew it straight across. I'm gonna put it back to one dash O three stitch. And I'm gonna reinforce the edges again. There we go. So that one's done. And it, because it's just the vinyl mesh, I don't tack these little corners in. I just fold them over down at the bottom of my bag and it works. They stay there. Okay, I'm gonna get the other side. Okay, here we go. All right. Okay, so now my corners are blocked. Now I can turn my bag back out again. I could put Summer in here. <laughs> Yes, I might just do that. <laughs> she wants me to carry her all day. And she's a little dog, but I'm telling you, on your arm and wrist, it gets a little heavy. Okay, so look, there's my bag. Now I'm gonna show you how I embellish my bags because I like to add a little sparkle to my patriotic bags, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, okay, there we go. Turn it around this way. I have some crystals. Where did I put them? Oh, there we go. If you have the Hot Fix Saworski crystals at home, and if you've never used the Hot Fix rhinestone setter, we also carry that here in the store too. I'm gonna show you how it's done. This is my favorite rhinestone setter because it's battery operated, it gets really hot, and you can use any size crystal. You're not limited. So I'm just going to decorate my little stars here. Just dump those out here in the center. Don't get blinded by my diamonds. <laughs> all right so all you do you just press the button on here and the light will light up and it will get really hot so be careful when you go to touch it because you may think oh that's not hot but it is very hot so then i'm just going to place a diamond on a star i'm going to set the heat tool right on top and i'm going to count to 10. And you're done sewing, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's set. It's that easy. I love this heat tool. So our key word today is to text. Type in. Oh, type in USA for the drawing. Okay. And what is it they're going to win? A $50 gift card. A $50 gift card. Woohoo! Nice. I bet you're all wondering who won the sharing contest last week. And I will give you that name. So the winner of 
the shared winner is Brenda Snyder. Congratulations. I hope you're on there today so you know that you won. And remember, do USA on the thumbs up today. That's all. This is this is the easiest tool. And it's battery operated. It's easy to take with you places. It's lightweight. Um, when I'm storing it, though, I do remove the batteries and just put them back in the box. 40 entries? Woohoo! Okay, I want to see 65 entries because I'm 65. <laughs> 65 shares and 65 USAs. Keep them coming in, girls and guys. Yes. My son was going to watch this live video today, but my granddaughter is graduating from elementary. Yes, in North Carolina. So he'll be busy today. I told him that's okay. I forgive him. Yes. I'm putting this on all the open stars. There we go. And sometimes I put them in the eyes too. It just adds a lot. I'll see if I can get a close up of my little doggy when we're all done. Will we be able to? Yeah. yeah? Okay, cool. Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but I had a lot of fun today. I love sharing my project with all of you. And remember, the pattern is free. We do have kits available. So just go online. Let us know. I think we have 15 kits with the dog panel. But you could also use just regular fabric. We have fabric that has little dog paws and dog bones on it, too. That is adorable. Okay, so I am done adding my rhinestones to my little puppy. And again, congratulations, Brenda Snyder, for winning the shared contest last week. So, all right, so can you get a close up of it? Or we could just do this one. <laughs> can you see it? Can you see the sparkle in the St. Bernard's eyes? Yep. He's so cute. So that is it for our Thumbs Up Thursday and our live video. So we I do. Oh, oh, yes, we will announce the winner. Woohoo. Oh, okay. So here's the bag. And let's find out who our winner is today. Remember, USA, 65 of them today. <laughs> oh, today I can't see the computer screen. Lorraine Gonzalez, congratulations. Thank you for popping in and spending time with us today. And I do hope that you make one of these bags. And I guess we will, um, somebody will be doing this next week. I'm not sure who yet, but thank you for sharing the day with me. And you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.